Pentagon officials say the U.S. is now considering resuming military cooperation with Uzbekistan because of the potential airbase loss. And in military news, the Army says it's investigating what it calls an unprecedented number of suicides last month. 24 Army deaths in January are being probed as suspected suicides. The toll would exceed the number of combat deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan over the same period. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Obama continues to be plagued by the tax problems of several of his nominees to top posts in his administration. Republicans have seized on the issue as an attack line against the Democrats. Representative Eric Cantor of Virginia, the House Republican whip, recently told a party retreat, quote, it's easy for the other side to advocate for higher taxes because you know what? They don't pay them. The series of nominees with tax problems started with Timothy Geithner. As Treasury Secretary, he now oversees the collection of taxes, but he failed to pay $34,000 in taxes until he received the offer of a cabinet job. Then there was Tom Daschle, nominated for Secretary of Health and Human Services, even though he neglected to pay $128,000 in taxes until he was nominated. And there was Nancy Killifer, chosen to be the White House Chief Performance Officer. She failed to pay unemployment taxes for household employee. Daschle and Killifer withdrew their names from consideration Tuesday after a firestorm in the media and on Capitol Hill. Geithner, on the other hand, was confirmed by the Senate last week. This is what he told the Senate Treasury Committee at his confirmation hearing. Senators, before I finish, I want to address directly the concerns many of you have raised about the mistakes I made in preparing my tax returns. These were careless mistakes. They were avoidable mistakes, but they were unintentional. I should have been more careful. I have gone back and corrected these errors and paid what I owed. I want to apologize to the committee for putting you in the position of having to spend so much time on these issues when there is so much pressing business before the country. Despite the fact that Geithner sailed through the confirmation process while Daschle went up in flames, Geithner's tax troubles were actually far more egregious. Well, at least that's the argument my two next guests put forth in their latest article. Don Bartlett and Jim Steele are contributing editors at Vanity Fair, who've been writing about taxes for nearly four decades. They've won virtually every major national journalism award, including two Pulitzer Prizes, two National Magazine Awards. Their latest article appears in the DailyBeast.com. It's called Why Geithner Was Worse Than Daschle. They're the authors of seven books, including The Great American Tax Dodge, How Spiraling Fraud and Avoidance Are Killing Fairness, Destroying the Income Tax and Costing You. Don Bartlett and Jim Steele, join us in Philadelphia. Welcome to Democracy Now! Um, good to be with you, baby. It's good to have you both with us. Um, Jim Steele, let's begin with you. Why do you think Geithner's problems were actually worse than Tom Daschle's tax problems? Well, Daschle ended up having to pay far more in taxes than Geithner did. Uh, and neither one of these cases are uh, forgivable or can be explained away easily. But the difference with Geithner is, is I think almost every American knows that you have to pay Social Security and Medicare taxes. I think. Just the average person on the street who draws a paycheck knows that. It's taken out of their check. And that's what's so disturbing about Geithner's. If these were avoidable mistakes, if these were simply things he overlooked, I think the question is why weren't those corrected at some point before uh, President Obama had tapped him to be Treasury Secretary? This is the thing that's actually disturbing about both of these cases. Both uh, Geithner and Daschle. Uh, went back and paid these taxes, but only after their names were dropped into that hopper, which suggested they were going to be cabinet officers. Uh, if these were truly into those categories of, of those kinds of mistakes, the question is, why wasn't that done at some time in the past, especially in the case of Geithner, where he had been uh, audited by the IRS in, 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 for previous tax years and had paid some additional taxes at that time. It was only after uh, he was uh, suggested for the Treasury Secretary, and the vetting process began uh, that he then remitted these additional taxes. Don Bartlett, uh, explain further exactly what the taxes were that Tim Geithner paid and didn't pay, and what the relation was to his work at the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Well, the, as Jim indicated, these are the payroll taxes, Social Security, Medicare, that everyone has to pay. And, you know, the tax code is complex. You have, everybody knows that. It is easy to make a mistake. But the reason we said that Geithner's uh, was far more egregious is this. 
He signed a piece of paper acknowledging that he owed both taxes while he was employed by the IMF. He then collected the money from IMF to pay the taxes. Now, most of us, you know, the, the payroll taxes are withheld. We don't get reimbursed for those taxes. Uh, we comes out of our own pocket. But Mr. Geithner not only signed a paper acknowledging he owed the taxes, he collected money to pay the taxes and then didn't pay them and pocketed the money. This is why it was far more egregious for him and why, you know, the New York Times demanded that uh, Tom Daschle uh, withdraw, and he did, but the same demand was not put on, on Mr. Geithner, and, and even more disturbing is the fact that only one uh, Democratic member of the Senate Finance Committee voted against Mr. Geithner for this reason. For this reason. That was uh, 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 the Iowa Senator Tom Harkin, who said he just couldn't support it. And, and Harkin was right, because the message this is sending to the public at large, the tax system already is as close to collapse as you're going to get as a result of it not being enforced evenly. The double standard on tax law, as you indicated in the introduction, Jim and I have been writing about taxes for almost 40 years. Our first series that won the Pulitzer Prize was on the unequal uh, enforcement of the, of the tax code. And that was back in the 1970s, and since then it has exploded. And what is happening now in Washington? Uh, just captures where it is now. Here you have the Senate Finance Committee approving this, and you have the Senate overwhelmingly approving it. I just want to go back to that one point that you made about Geithner and what you wrote about in this piece in the Daily Beast. According to the Senate Finance Committee, Geithner filled out, signed, and submitted an annual tax allowance request with the IMF that states, I wish to apply for tax allowance of U.S. federal and state income taxes and the difference between the self-employed and employed obligation of the U.S. Social Security tax, which I will pay on my fund income. So the IMF actually gave him money uh, for those taxes to pay. But he didn't pay them. When exactly um, did this come to his attention, and why is it now that he's paying them, Don? Well, he wanted to be Secretary of the Treasury. You want a top cabinet job, you got to pay your taxes. I mean, it looks a little uh, unseemly if you don't. Right. It's clear why he's paying them now, but how long was it? I mean, it was called to his attention before this point. Uh, IRS did two, uh, two, audits. Uh, two audits for, for a couple of those previous years, and he didn't have a, uh, a settlement with them at that time. But it was not until uh, his name was proposed for Treasury Secretary uh, that then, uh, the vetting, the, in that vetting process, he went back and looked at two other years, as, as I, if I'm not mistaken. And it was on those, where the situation was very similar to the ones he'd settled with IRS, that he then paid the taxes. You write, don't look for Congress to order the IRS to start collecting. For a quarter of a century, lawmakers have toiled tirelessly to discourage enforcement right. of the Internal Revenue Code. Jim Steele, go on with that point. One of the points we made in, our, in the, uh, the Daily Beast piece was that uh, there, there's almost become a culture of avoidance, and beyond that, in the more severe cases of fraud in the country. And one of the reasons is you've had Congress systematically for many years now saying, uh, we don't really want tough enforcement. They don't say that in, in exactly those words, but by uh, restricting the IRS, by cutting its workforce, by discouraging uh, the sophisticated studies that measure taxpayer compliance, uh, by actually legislation that has tied the hands of many IRS, IRS agents, they said we really don't want vigorous enforcement. Now, everybody knows the IRS from time to time oversteps its bounds, and we've written about taxes in the IRS for many, many years. So we know that, and we, we, we understand that. But it's one thing for that versus what Congress did but starting back in the 90s in particular. They began passing laws that were called restructuring and reform of IRS. And in these laws, they set forth a, a list of uh, actions that, if an agent committed, were grounds for dismissal, for firing. I mean, some of these were downright ridiculous. If you assaulted a taxpayer, of course you should be fired. And one would hope that was true even before that law. But another of these things, and they called them inside the agency the 10 deadly sins, was something like this. If you harassed a taxpayer, what does that mean? If you go out and ask a taxpayer who hasn't paid their bills, 
uh, their, their taxes to pay those bills? Is that harassment? I mean, nobody likes to pay, nobody likes taxes per se. It's an unpopular agency that way. But the message was clear. Congress just systematically over and over again tried to emasculate the IRS. They sent the message that enforcement was not that important an issue anymore. So it's not surprising that, that avoidance